in the inky blackness of the ocean's deepest realm, where pressure could crush a submarine like a tin can, an extraordinary creature has been found. Meet the Mariana snailfish, a living proof to nature's ingenuity and resilience. This ghostly fish, with a body so adapted to extreme conditions it seems almost alien, is revolutionizing our understanding of life on Earth. First observed in 2014 and formally described in 2017, this pale translucent fish has quickly become the subject of intense scientific interest. Measuring up to 28.8 centimeters or about 11 inches in length, the Mariana snailfish might not seem particularly imposing at first glance but its ability to survive and even flourish at depths of up to 8,000 meters or 26.5 thousand feet makes it a true marvel of nature. The discovery of the Mariana snailfish wasn't just a stroke of luck. It took years of dedicated research, innovative technology, and a fair bit of perseverance. The first specimens were caught during an expedition of the research vessel Falkor using specially designed deep water traps. These traps had to be robust enough to withstand the immense pressure of the deep sea, while also being gentle enough to preserve the delicate bodies of the fish during their ascent to the surface. What makes the Mariana snailfish so special? Its body is a living proof of the power of evolutionary adaptation. Unlike its shallow water relatives, this fish has undergone some remarkable changes to cope with life in the Hadal Zone, the deepest layer of the ocean. Let's start with its appearance. The Mariana snailfish looks almost ghostly, with a body so translucent that you can actually see its liver through its skin. This lack of pigmentation is a common trait among deep sea creatures, where the absence of light makes camouflage largely unnecessary. Its body is tadpole-like, with a large head tapering to a slender tail, a shape that helps it navigate the crushing pressures of its environment. One of the most striking features of the Mariana snailfish is its skeleton, or rather, the lack thereof. Unlike most fish, which have fully hardened bones, the skeleton of P. swireye is largely made of cartilage. This is no accident of nature. The softer, more flexible cartilage allows the fish to withstand the enormous pressure of the deep sea without being crushed. In fact, researchers have discovered that these fish have a mutation in the primary gene responsible for bone calcification, effectively softening their skeleton. The fish's skull is another marvel of adaptation. It's not fully closed, featuring gaps that allow it to equalize the pressure inside and outside its body. Without this adaptation, the extreme pressure would likely cause fatal damage to the fish's internal organs. The physical structure of the Mariana snailfish is just the beginning of its remarkable adaptations. To truly appreciate how extraordinary this creature is, we need to dive into its physiology the internal workings that allow it to not just survive, but thrive in its extreme habitat. One of the biggest challenges of deep sea life is maintaining cellular function under immense pressure. At the depths where the Mariana snailfish lives, the pressure can reach up to 800 atmospheres. That's equivalent to balancing the weight of 50 jumbo jets on your body. To cope with this, the fish has evolved some fascinating molecular tricks. Chief among these is the presence of pressure-adapted proteins and cell membranes. The Mariana snailfish produces high levels of a substance called trimethylamine N-oxide. This organic compound acts as a sort of cellular antifreeze, preventing proteins from being crushed or denatured under high pressure. What's more, Genetic analysis has revealed that while most animals have one copy of the gene responsible for TMAO production, the Mariana snailfish has five. This gives it an exceptional ability to stabilize its proteins in its high-pressure environment. Another physiological challenge in the deep sea is the scarcity of oxygen. 
The Mariana snailfish has adapted to this by developing larger red blood cells that can carry more oxygen. This allows it to extract the maximum amount of oxygen from the limited supply available in its environment. You might think that living in such an extreme environment would limit the Mariana snailfish's ability to thrive. But you'd be wrong. Despite the challenges, this fish has carved out a successful niche for itself as a top predator in its deep sea realm. The Mariana snailfish feeds primarily on tiny crustaceans that inhabit the trench. Its diet consists largely of amphipods, small, shrimp-like creatures that are abundant in the deep sea. The snailfish's mouth is perfectly adapted for this diet, able to create a suction that draws in its prey whole. What's particularly interesting is how successful the Mariana snailfish is as a predator. Researchers examining captured specimens found their stomachs full of prey, indicating that despite the scarcity of resources in the deep sea, these fish are well-fed. In fact, they're so successful that they're considered the top predator in certain parts of the Mariana Trench. This success is partly due to the lack of competition. Few other fish species can survive at such depths, leaving the Mariana snailfish with a virtual monopoly on the available food resources. It's a perfect example of how life can find a way to thrive even in the most challenging environments. One of the most intriguing aspects of the Mariana snailfish is how it navigates and hunts in an environment of total darkness. At depths of over 6,000 meters, not a single photon of sunlight penetrates. So how does this fish find its way around and locate prey? The answer lies in a suite of sensory adaptations that allow the Mariana snailfish to see without light. For starters, these fish have essentially lost their eyes. Genetic analysis shows that they lack several key photoreceptor genes, rendering them effectively blind. But in the pitch black world of the deep sea, eyes would be useless anyway. Instead, the Mariana snailfish relies heavily on other senses. It has an extremely well-developed lateral line system, a series of sensory organs that run along the length of its body. This system allows the fish to detect minute vibrations and changes in water pressure, effectively giving it a three-dimensional awareness of its surroundings. The fish also likely has an enhanced sense of smell, which would help it locate food in the darkness. Some deep-sea fish have been found to have enlarged olfactory organs, and while this hasn't been specifically confirmed in the Mariana snailfish, it's a likely adaptation given its environment. The reproductive strategies of deep-sea creatures are often as fascinating as their other adaptations, and the Mariana snailfish is no exception. These fish have evolved a unique approach to ensuring the survival of their offspring in the challenging environment of the Hadal zone. One of the most striking features of Mariana snailfish reproduction is the size of their eggs. Females produce eggs that are almost one centimeter in diameter, enormous by fish standards. These large eggs are packed with nutrients, giving the developing embryos the best possible start in life. It's a strategy that's well suited to an environment where food can be scarce and conditions are harsh. Interestingly, researchers have found that female Mariana snailfish have two distinct size classes of eggs in their ovaries. There are the large, mature eggs ready for fertilization and a much larger number of smaller, immature eggs. This suggests that the fish may be able to produce multiple batches of eggs over time, a strategy that could help ensure the species' survival if one batch fails to develop successfully. Another fascinating aspect of Mariana snailfish reproduction is the behavior of their larvae. While adult snailfish live in the extreme depths of the trench, there's evidence to suggest that their larvae may spend time in shallower, open waters. This could be a way of dispersing the population and potentially colonizing new areas of the deep sea. 
The story of how the Mariana snailfish came to inhabit the extreme depths of the ocean is a fascinating tale of evolutionary adaptation. Genetic studies suggest that this species diverged from its shallow water relatives about 20 million years ago. That's a relatively short time in evolutionary terms, making the Mariana snailfish's adaptations all the more remarkable. The journey from shallow waters to the Hadal zone wasn't a single leap, but rather a gradual process of adaptation. As the ancestors of the Mariana snailfish ventured into deeper waters, they faced increasing pressure to evolve mechanisms to cope with the changing conditions. Those individuals with mutations that allowed them to better withstand the pressure, darkness, and scarcity of food would have been more likely to survive and pass on their genes. Over millions of years, this process of natural selection shaped the Mariana snailfish into the uniquely adapted creature we see today. Its cartilaginous skeleton, pressure-resistant proteins, and enhanced sensory systems are all the result of countless generations of evolution, each slightly better adapted to life in the deep than the last. What's particularly interesting is that the Mariana snailfish isn't alone in its deep sea adaptation. Other species of snailfish have been found in deep trenches around the world, each evolving similar traits independently. This convergent evolution underscores just how powerful the selective pressures of the deep sea environment are. While the Mariana snailfish might be the star of our story, it's just one player in the complex ecosystem of the Mariana Trench. Understanding this ecosystem is crucial to appreciating the true significance of the snailfish's adaptations and its role in this unique environment. At first glance, you might expect the Mariana Trench to be a barren wasteland, devoid of life. But nothing could be further from the truth. Despite the extreme conditions, the trench is home to a diverse array of organisms, each adapted in its own way to life in the deep. At the base of the food web are microorganisms like bacteria and archaea. These tiny creatures have evolved to thrive in the high-pressure, nutrient-poor environment of the trench. Some feed on organic matter that sinks down from shallower waters, while others have developed the ability to derive energy from chemical reactions in the water or sediment, a process known as chemosynthesis. Moving up the food chain, we find a variety of small invertebrates. Amphipods, the primary prey of the Mariana snailfish, are particularly abundant. These small crustaceans scavenge on organic matter and smaller organisms, playing a crucial role in recycling nutrients in the deep-sea ecosystem. Other inhabitants of the trench include bizarre creatures like the blob sculpin, a fish with a gelatinous body that helps it withstand the pressure, and various species of sea cucumber that crawl along the ocean floor, feeding on detritus. There are even species of shrimp and other crustaceans that have evolved bioluminescence, the ability to produce their own light to help them navigate and communicate in the darkness. At the top of this food chain sits the Mariana snailfish. As a top predator, it plays a crucial role in maintaining the balance of the ecosystem. By controlling the population of amphipods and other prey species, it helps prevent any one species from dominating the environment. In the end, the terrifying new creature from the Mariana Trench isn't so much frightening as it is awe-inspiring. The Mariana snailfish challenges us to think bigger, to look beyond our familiar surroundings, and to consider the vast possibilities that exist in the unexplored corners of our world. And if you want to dive deeper into the mysteries of the ocean, Make sure you're subscribed to this channel.